I have a four and a half year old grandson. He lives 10 minutes from me on an island off the coast of Washington State. And I walk with him often in the woods. And as I do that, I think to myself, what's this world gonna look like when he's my age, six, six decades from now? And as I hear these stories tonight, and as I look around this world, I think, my God, if we continue like this, his life will be miserable but we have the opportunity to change things. And so I want to move into the positive aspects of what I'm feeling about the world today, and I am positive. We are in extremely revolutionary times. You and I are living in perhaps the time of greatest revolutions mankind has ever known, and womankind. I think this revolution is bigger than the agricultural revolution or the industrial revolution, the American revolution, the French revolution. We are in a revolution. Something amazing is happening today around the world. The Arab Spring is one incredible sign of it. The, the amazing democratic revolutions that have gone on in 10 Latin American countries, what's happening in China? I was just there, I go to Istanbul next week, I was in Istanbul three months ago. What's happening in Turkey? What's happening in Russia against Putin? What's happening in China? What's happening all over the world? People are waking up. And we are at a time in history, the first time in human history, when every single one of us on this planet is facing the same crises. We've never been here before. We used to have hurricanes in the Carolinas, still do, and tsunamis in Asia, but they didn't really affect each other, those countries very much when that happened. But today, every single human being, in fact, every sentient being on this planet is impacted by climate chaos. The glaciers are melting, the oceans are rising, and every one of us is impacted by the fact that Resources are declining at accelerating rates. And the prices of essentials like food and fuel are increasing at accelerating rates. And species are going extinction, extinct at terrible rates. Our populations are exploding. We're still fighting insane wars. For the first time in history, though, we're all impacted by this. Every creature on this planet is impacted by this. And for the first time, we're all communicating with each other. A few years ago, I was high up in the Himalayas at about 17,000 feet, standing next to a glacier that was receding, talking to a tribal chieftain who was lamenting the fact that his people would never have telephones because the lines couldn't reach that far. And I'd hear the same thing in the Amazon. I spent a lot of time in the Amazon. I, worked, I, I organized a couple of nonprofits that work in both of those areas, Tibet and the Amazon. They would say the same thing in the Amazon. The telephone lines will never come here. Well, last week I talked to a chieftain deep in the Amazon by telephone. He's on a satellite cell phone, and so is that chieftain of the nomadic groups up in the Himalayas. We are all talking to each other. We're texting. We're, we're, whatever we're doing, <laughs> across the planet. We can even get languages translated on Google. We've never been here before. These are revolutionary times. We're all faced by the same crises. We're all communicating with each other. And we're beginning to f t totally understand that we are living on a very, very tiny, fragile space station. But unlike the space station that our astronauts built, this one hasn't, ha hasn't got any sh shuttles. You can't get off it, and neither can my grandson, and neither will any of your children or grandchildren be able to get off it. We've got to take care of it. These are the times to do it. And we find ourselves today in very bad shape. Terrible economic crisis that's going on. The amazing hostility, the discrimination, what we heard about with this young man, Hassan, and what we know is going on throughout the Middle East and throughout so much of the world, and you have experienced it. I, my heart is just aching being here. Because, you know, I was talking to someone in the men's room after dinner, after the, the last conversation, and saying, I have a feeling that if I had written Confessions of an Economic Hitman, and if I were 
Muslim, I'd be in the penitentiary. I know I'm privileged through nothing I've done of my own. I've come into this world and this country from 300 years of Yankees, Puritans, and that gives me a privilege that I don't deserve. And you are discriminated against through no fault of your own. And that's horrible. I cannot tolerate it. It is intolerable and none of us should tolerate it. And this is part of where we must go. We know that we've created a failure. And I want to speak a little bit about the economics here. And I want to get into this business that the speech is built up to be about corruption in the Muslim world and economic hitmen. But having heard what I heard tonight, I had to speak that piece. We know we've created a failure on this planet. Our economic system is a total failure. One example, just one example, is that less than 5% of us live in the United States and we consume almost 30% of the world's resources, while half the world is starving or on the verge of starvation. That's not a model. You can't repeat it in China or India or Africa or Latin America. These countries may want to replicate what we've done, but they can't. 5% consuming 30% of the world's resources, the numbers don't add up. The rest of the world can't do it. We need another five planets, just like this one, without people. It's not going to happen. So we know what we've created is a failure. We know we have to change it. This economic cr crash that we've gone through that we say we're recovering from, we're not going to recover from this. We can't recover from it. We can't go back to normal because normal is a failure. It's not a model. We've got to create something new. And we are at this point in time now when we're all beginning to wake up. The Arab Spring was an incredible wake-up call. The Occupy Movement is an incredible wake-up call. The young people that I work with in China, MBA students there, the future leaders of China, they're getting wake awoken. And in Latin America and throughout Europe, it's happening. We are waking up, and we've got to keep waking up. And I think before I go on, I want to talk a little bit more about what we all can do to, to wake up and to change this world, because we have to. For the sake of my grandson, his name is Grant, for Grant's sake, for Grant's sake, we have to wake up. And we have to realize that again, for the first time in human history, Grant cannot have a sustainable, just, peaceful, and thriving world unless every child born in Botswana and Bolivia and in Palestine and Israel and in Indonesia and Tibet, unless every child on this planet of every sentient being has that same expectation of, have, of growing up in a sustainable, just, and peaceful world, and it's realized for all children. It has to be for all of us now. It has to be. We're beginning to understand that. How did we get here? <clears throat> 